Explanation of the Evidence at the Pentagon on 9-11, created by Wayne Costey, narrated by David Chandler. Here's the table of contents, and here's the table of contents for chapters 9 to 17. Chapter 11, Pentagon Security Camera Analysis. The security cameras at the Pentagon that captured the plane images have been subject to a lot of controversy. The images at the distance of the plane in the background are small and fuzzy. There were two nearly adjacent cameras aimed in about the same direction with slightly different perspectives. Those differences have been asserted by some to result from fraud to not be explainable by timing differences. One claim is the cameras took identical frames except for only one that was different. The movie The New Pearl Harbor is the source of some of this controversy. The core assertion there provided by the narrator is, given that the maximum fluctuation between the two cameras would translate in a difference of 25 feet in the position of the plane, can you provide a valid explanation for the large discrepancies between the two corresponding frames? Note, this objection is based on the unsubstantiated assertion of a maximum of 1 30th of a second between the frames. The frames, by the way, were recorded on the same recording device, so they had to be one after the other, not exactly simultaneous. The camera does have the capacity to record frames at a 30th of a second intervals, but analysis shows that the frames from the two cameras here were recorded 4 30ths of a second apart. So at the speed of the plane, it would have traveled 100 feet between the two camera views, not 25 feet. We will be going through how that was determined. The challenge from the new Pearl Harbor's analysis is, absent a valid explanation for this discrepancy, we must conclude that at least one of the two frames is the result of intentional manipulation or photoshopping. This analysis will address the new Pearl Harbor's challenge and substantiate the validity of the security camera videos. One pair of frames from the two videos that shows a completely different action from one another. They happen to be the two frames in which the plane travels across the lawn. It's frame 23 in the relative count. As the first video showed the tail and the trail of smoke, we would expect the second camera placed in this concrete column to show the entire body of the plane in the same position. It does not. In the corresponding frame, camera 2 shows only the tip of the plane entering frame from the right-hand corner. But how can the nose of the plane be behind the tail at the same moment in time? The synchronization system allows for a maximum fluctuation between the two cameras, or margin of error, of 1 30th of a second. Given that the plane is traveling at 750 feet per second, the maximum possible fluctuation between the two cameras would translate into a difference of a mere 25 feet in the position of the plane. A 757 is 155 feet long. Even calculating the perspective due to the diagonal path, this is far from sufficient to explain the large discrepancy between the two images. Furthermore, after this moment, the two videos resume their perfect synchronization, which is maintained all the way to the end. Bert has then proceeded to analyze the two frames with the most sophisticated digital tools and has obtained some astonishing results. A series of Boolean subtractions reveals that a small part of the image is actually present in both frames. What is said to be the nose of the airplane in camera two is also present as part of the smoke trail in camera one. It seems in fact as if someone has retouched this area of the frame by means of cut and paste in order to cover the plane, while he has kept the end of the smoke trail to make it look like the nose of the plane entering frame. Question. Given that the maximum fluctuation between the two cameras would translate in a difference of 25 feet in the position of the plane, can you provide a valid explanation for the large discrepancy between the two corresponding frames? Absent a valid explanation for this discrepancy, we must conclude that at least one of the two frames is the result of intentional manipulation or photoshopping. In the new Pearl Harbor, they claim to have looked at all the frames and found differences in only one of them. But in fact, there are many more frames outside the range they were looking at. The new Pearl Harbor's analysis focuses on the five frames from each camera at impact. They neglect other information in the videos. For instance, they ignore Mickey Bell's truck that was speeding away, and they neglect an analysis of projectiles that are different in the two cameras. 
The movement of these other objects shows that the two cameras do not record simultaneously. The difference in timing can be quantified, and it can be used to do things like estimate the speed of the plane. The use of the smoke as a marker is not useful because the smoke cloud moves and changes slowly. Multiple versions of the security camera videos are posted on YouTube, sometimes called Camera 1 and Camera 2. Here we will be calling them Camera A and Camera B. The times we use are in seconds with respect to the frames of the respective videos. The locations of the cameras are as shown here. The Pentagon is on the right. What we will call Camera A is in the pedestal between the lanes of the driveway. Camera B is at the guard shack. They are aimed in the same direction and have similar fields of view. You can tell which is which when looking at the videos because camera B shows the pedestal containing camera A. Here is an aerial shot showing what they would be looking at. The plane comes in from the bottom right. The parallax between the two cameras would be minimal because of their close alignment. Camera A. Here is the first frame. Here is the second frame. This is the one where New Pearl Harbor says you can see the plane approaching. Then the plane impacts, creating a fireball. The fireball continues to build, and it continues to build. Note that the fireball is not seen here at ground level. Wayne suggests this is because it is being dispersed by a trailing air mass from the moving plane. Note that the fireball is going up and over the Pentagon, not out. Also note there is some moving debris here. This debris is seen in both cameras. Camera B. Here is before the plane enters the view. Here the plane is behind the pedestal. Here is the impact. And here is the fireball. Again, note that the fireball appears cleared away from the first floor level, as though dispersed by a trailing air mass. The assertion in the New Pearl Harbor is that the fireballs are indistinguishable between the two cameras. But the fireballs are very slowly developing features and would not be expected to show noticeable movement over small time intervals. It's very poor analysis to base this kind of assertion on the appearance of the fireball. Again, here is the illuminated moving debris. Plane image analysis. Flipping between two adjacent slides allows comparison of the movement of an object between the two cameras, and the difference can be quantified. Our observation is that the horizontal motion suggests a timing difference between the cameras. Because of the slight difference in perspective, care is needed in aligning the images. To register the frames, we will be using the treetops, which are visible in both camera views. This is camera A. This is camera B registration. Here is camera A without a plane. Here is camera A with a plane. Without a plane. With a plane. Let's do that a few more times. Here we have placed markers on the nose of the plane and the top of the tail. Here is a rough outline around the plane. Moving on, here is a camera B without the plane. With the plane. Without the plane. With the plane. Let's do that a few more times. Here we put marks on the tip of the nose and the tail, and here is a rough outline of the plane. Taking the sketches of the plane from one frame to the other, we can see the plane has moved about 106 feet based on the length of the plane, which is 155 feet. Assuming the plane is moving at 530 miles per hour, this would make the time interval between the two views 4 thirtieths of a second. Mickey Bell's truck. Mickey Bell was less than 100 feet from the initial impact and was nearly struck by one of the plane's wings. In shock, he got into his truck, which had been parked in the trailer compound, and sped away. It wasn't until later that he even realized what had happened. His truck moving across the field gives us the ability to verify the timing difference between the cameras and get an independent estimate of the speed of the plane. Here is Mickey Bell's route for his quick exit. 
Here is camera A before the impact. No truck is visible. With camera A, here is his truck. Again. And here is a clearer view of him driving away and continuing to drive away. Here is camera B before the truck is visible. Here the truck is visible. Here is the truck again, about to disappear behind the pedestal. Here the truck is emerging from behind the pedestal. And here it is again. Let's do an alignment using the side of the firehouse wall as a reference point. This is camera A. Here is camera B with the reference line. Here is camera A before the impact. No truck is yet visible. Here Mickey Bell's truck first becomes visible. Here are markers for the wheels of the truck. Here is a sketch of the truck's body. We are using the size of the truck to estimate the length at this distance. Comparing sequential frames, we see it moves about two and a quarter lengths, or 41 feet, in one second. The camera is recording one frame per second. This gives us the average speed of the truck in this time interval, 41 feet per second, or 28 miles per hour. Here is the first frame of camera B that shows the truck. Here are the wheels. Here is the body of the truck. Note that the images of the truck as seen in camera A and camera B are out of register by about 5.6 feet. If the offset is 5.6 feet and the truck is moving 41 feet per second, the offset between the two cameras is 0.136 seconds, which works out to be 4 thirtieths of a second. This is consistent with the measurements we did earlier, but it is independent of assumptions about the speed of the plane. This is an independent confirmation of the offset between the two camera recording times, so it's an independent confirmation of the speed of the plane. Let's look at a close-up of the little cartoons of the truck. This is camera A. Here we have the wheels, the back of the cab, and the overall length of the truck. And here is how far it has moved between the exposures by the two cameras, 5.6 feet. And looking at the scale, there is no significant perspective difference for these two images. Observation. The truck moves about 5.6 feet between the frame capture times of the two cameras. We can find the speed of the truck from how far it moves in one camera view in one second, giving a speed of 41 feet per second, or 28 miles per hour. Comparing this with the motion of the plane, the plane moved 106 feet in the same offset time interval. This gives us a speed of the plane which is consistent with other measurements of its speed within the precision of the measurements. Therefore, the analysis in New Pearl Harbor is flawed and Mazimoto's hypothesis that the maximum offset was 1 30th of a second must be rejected. We can use the now known offset time between the two cameras and the fact that the plane moves 106 feet between the two frames to come up with an independent derivation of the speed of the plane. From these observations and measurements, the speed turns out to be 542 miles per hour. This is consistent with other estimates in the range of 530 to 560 miles per hour. We also have an analysis of the motion of projectiles seen in the two videos. This is not useful for making quantitative measurements, but it does verify that there's an offset in the capture times for the frames for the two videos. The videos contain other items that move and are captured by the two cameras with an offset time. Some of the projectile positions are masked for one of the cameras. The projectiles can't be identified with certainty in both images, and we can't locate them spatially with certainty. But at minimum, they do show that the two videos are different, which supports their authenticity. Here we see a projectile that is seen in camera A over three frames. Here is what may be the same projectile captured in camera B in a somewhat different location. There is not much we can say about this except to point out the frames that look pretty much alike in the two cameras actually have differences for fast-moving objects. Analysis of the fireball. The fireball is captured by both cameras. It builds and moves across the rooftop toward the D, C, and B rings. Smoke moves relatively slowly and has no clearly identifiable things to trace. We note that the fireball was not seen near the ground after the first frame. The first frame shows the fireball moving three-dimensionally along the ground, 
but later frames suggest a trailing air mass from the incoming plane pushes the fireball up. The fireball comparisons are not suitable for conclusions about timings. Here we see that a trailing air mass carries momentum, which is able to push the fireball up and away from the impact area. Here's a rocket sled test where an F-4 Phantom jet is crashed into a heavy concrete block at Sandia Labs at 480 miles per hour. Note there is no fuel in the jet, so what is seen is the result of momentum in the crash without a fireball. The high kinetic energy of the plane causes it to be largely shredded upon impact. The fragments are ejected outward, but there is a contribution due to the trailing air mass that pushes it outward, upward, and forward, and not reflected backward due to the impact alone. Here we see the fireball in camera A with the trailing air mass pushing it up and to the left. Here with camera B, we see a slight displacement of the fireball to the left. We can't rule out perspective effects, but some of the motion we see may be due to the trailing air mass. The fireball from the Doubletree Hotel security camera. The footage from the Doubletree security camera was released under a Freedom of Information Act request in 2006. Three security camera videos were released, but only one shows the Pentagon event. The Gila port is on the opposite side from the Doubletree Hotel. No image of a plane would be expected. The evolution of the fireball we see is above the roof line. Note that no other planes or helicopters are in the video, and no plane is seen flying over the Pentagon before or after the fireball. Here is the view from the Doubletree looking toward the Pentagon from an elevated vantage point. The official path of the plane is shown in red. The actual security camera is lower, and the Pentagon is blocked by the gray highway wall. Here you see the fireball as it emerges to the left of the trees at the top of the picture. Before the impact, we have this image. Here the fireball begins to be visible. One second later, it's here. Two seconds later, it's here. Three seconds later, it's here. Curious references to another possible video. While this is not directly related to this topic, a FOIA release included a document that might suggest another video. Here we have a document that says, Secret Service says cameras did see aircraft go in. Could the reference to cameras be the parking gate security cameras? It seems like too low resolution for such a statement. It leaves unanswered whether there might have been unacknowledged or clandestine real-time videos. Similarly, in December 2001, President Bush said that before he went into the classroom at the school in Florida, he saw the first plane hit the tower. There were no live broadcasts of the first plane hitting the tower, so it raises the possibility that the event was being filmed by people who knew what was about to happen. The whole question is still open, and we can't make any definitive statements on it. In Chapter 12, we will look at the aircraft debris.